Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Me with a quick video. Um, I recently uh, did a little bit of a Facebook challenge. Um, there was a, a thread going around, uh, what are your top 10 favorite albums with no description, no explanation. And I said, screw you, I'm going to give you 13 and I'm going to actually list exactly why I like them uh, once per day. And uh, I figured that was actually pretty reflective of me. I had to write them down. I actually had to ponder and think through my Bass collection. I actually like these albums, how influential they were for me. Um, and uh, it actually kind of gives me some signposts of what to look for in the future. Um, it was kind of definitive for me, as well as uh, give me signposts of where I'm going to be going with my music. And interestingly enough, it also helped um, kind of hone my own judgment as to why some of the materials that I've written in the past I don't really like listening to. Um, it's one thing to actually come up with something and record it, but then when you have the final product, uh, I found that it's like, oh, this is not what I was looking for at all. I mean, it's got the elements of my ideas and stuff, but the way it just came together was like wrong. It doesn't sound like the kind of stuff that I like. Uh, and it wasn't really me just being hypercritical. Just uh, the, the, the original impetus of wanting to sound amazing um, when you put all the effort into it just didn't come together. And if I knew exactly what I was going for towards the end, I'd actually have some direction. Uh, separately, um, thinking and reflecting about all those albums that I listened to when I was a kid also kind of made me realize like, oh, this is why I'm interested in music so much. It really kind of grabbed me by hooks and, and just kind of dragged me along, formed me and my tastes. Um, so i just like to explain that to you now as a musician. Um, also, I'm going to be looking back on this uh, and uh, seeing uh, how I'm going to be progressing as I'm recording the stuff that I'm doing right now. Uh, also, feel free to pitch in your ideas. Tell me about the music that you're listening to right now. Uh, send me some lists, send me some musicians, uh, tell me why you like them, and uh, uh, I'll hopefully get a chance to respond to you. And if we do see each other online, that'd be fantastic. For example, you, Sherry Breezy, at the Lollipop Thrift Shop, um, I hear that you like to watch my videos, and um, uh, a little birdie told me that uh, you found them interesting. So, this one's dedicated to you, and I hope to see you online. That's the Lollipop Thrift Shop, located on 51st Street, uh, address is 4913. That's 4913, 51st Street, Athabasca, Alberta. So, first off, here's on my list of uh, albums that I really, really like. Uh, I've got a list. Um, I'm going to say, starting off with classical music, um, one album, uh, Carmina Burana by Carl Orff. As soon as you hear it, you'll know exactly which album I'm talking about. Um, getting past the first part, which is also the last part, spoilers, um, there's uh, three different sections in three different languages, and uh, it's a lot of choir music. It's got solos in all four or five different ranges, all of which I can sing. So when I was growing up to it, uh, playing my Legos, my dad recording and dubbing it from t uh, record player onto tapes, um, I eventually got the CD for myself, and I loved blasting it in uh, the car when I was driving around to pick up my girlfriend. And uh, I do want to demonstrate some of the vocals for you, just not in this particular video. Season 2, it's going to be all about vocals, so I'm going to blast you at that time. Uh, I think it was in high school, um, I learned how to do calligraphy, um, something my dad used to do back in the day, and um, I was able to write out uh, the whole Latin verses for the first and the last little parts, the bookends, and it was pretty formative. Yeah. Um, album slash band number two, Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> Such good music. Um, he was able to get the rights from the record companies to reproduce the music accurately and just change up the lyrics so that it was funny. As a kid, uh, my dad had dubbed everything from record onto tape and I was able to play it again and again and again and again. And Michael Jackson was very popular. Just a whole bunch of really silly songs. And as a kid, it was fun. So yeah, I learned how to sing all of them. Um, he modulates his voice particularly well and plays with excellent musicians. So listening to that was an education. Um, he covered The Police. Uh, he covered Tom Petty. Uh, he covered, oh geez. Madonna. 
<laughs> like a surgeon. <laughs> it's just, it's a good time. The guy hasn't aged either. He just keeps on going and doing his thing. Um, he's he's a phenomenal, phenomenal musician. A great entertainer. Really, really enjoy. And uh, if he parodies your music, then you know you've made it in the record industry. Um, and when I was growing up also, approximately that time, U2 was very, very popular. So uh, I really, really enjoy U2 and Bono. I've seen him in concert. Um, and uh, it was an incredible experience with friends, uh, great light show, uh, huge audience uh, in attendance, um, really great time. And the tickets came to me by chance, like, oh, it's so good to have friends with connections. Um, and and you know, totally randomly seeing my friends in the audience, like a few seats down, that was totally random. And we're all singing because we all are YouTube fans and we know all the lyrics and it was just a really, really good time. And it's all because uh, he produces lots of good music. Uh, U2, The Edge is incredible with uh, all his effects. Uh, I know some of my other friends, they don't like all the... a bit more purist when it comes to the sound. Um, or uh, the preachiness, perhaps, of uh, Bono. Um, he's uh, you know very environmental and, and global and whatnot. Uh, very universal kind of minded and also spiritual too. Apparently the Irish don't like Bono very much and they kind of want to punch him in the back of the head as a joke. Now also growing up around that particular time there is some really amazing bands like The Cult or ACDC, some uh, stadium rock, hard driven stuff. Um, ACDC I can't really count as my favorite albums though. Um, same thing as Easy Top, you know, good music but eh. uh, The Cult I really liked. Uh, because the uh, Ian throwing these vocals, that was really cool. Uh, several songs, but again, the songs kind of on the simple side. Um, they had the hooks, they had the tones, but as far as uh, favorite albums, I can't really quite say that. But if you used to say Black Sabbath, that kind of rock and metal, oh my God, really, really good. Um, and it spawned like its like own little kind of area within a heavy metal. And uh, the lead singer Ozzy is still alive. Oh my gosh. Years ago, that guy is, he's, he's led it a freaking amazing life. Um, that style of music, that dark haunting kind of uh, metal. Um, but when you actually get into it, it's really just swing groove oriented, having a good time, hippie music. Pretty much like a uh, hippie peace loving. Uh, if you read into the lyrics, um, a lot of drug related references and escapism, um, but wanting to go for bliss and freedom. Um, uh, another uh, album I have to say is absolutely fantastic and the band that I love multiple albums is Pink Floyd. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon, absolutely my favorite album. Uh, and some of their songs and different albums of course are just absolutely stellar! Uh, I hear the few bars of it and my pupils just dilate now and I go, whoa. Just excellent music. No drugs, just excellent, excellent music. Uh, it's another band that also has saxophone in it, not uh, one of the official members. Dick Perry is just brilliant though, and he's on several of the uh, Pink Floyd albums. And listening to that saxophone, that, that man breathes through that reed. Now Pink Floyd kind of edges on the dark and mysterious as well. Um, further into the dark, mysterious, and romantic section of themes of music is the Tea Party. Uh, I really got into... Um, uh, Jeff Martin with the Tea Party. The 90s, I've seen him uh, at least a couple of times and uh, he keeps on going and going and going. Um, he has split apart from the band, does his own thing down in Australia, has his uh, um, mixed studio down there, uh, but then comes back and uh, I was supposed to see him again here in Edmonton uh, two years ago, but pandemic, so everything got cancelled and postponed and just probably not going to ever happen. But uh, hopefully I have a chance to actually meet the guy, get VIP tickets and see him shake his hand. Of all the music, uh, I'd have to say the Tea Party has got the, the dark mystery and uh, the kind of synesthesia that I'm looking for. Having a worldly kind of uh, uh, flavor to the music. Uh, while I was growing up in my 20s, uh, Pearl Jam uh, was absolutely ginormous. Well, late teens and 20s. Pearl Jam, huge! Uh, but even more so than Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, from that particular uh, area of the continent. The music um, was a 
uh, a definite heavy groove rock, similar to Black Sabbath, but it had uh, a lot of kind of a punk anger behind it and uh, a rebelliousness. I am reading a book called Total Fucking Godhead, uh, and it's about uh, the life and times of Chris Cornell. Uh, I'm only into the part where he started to become famous before they got signed. And yeah, they are from a punk background. When you listen also to the themes of Chris Cornell, uh, as a lead vocalist and uh, a writer, he does have some, you know, dark angst and themes of rebellion and pent-up anguish and anger. And uh, he took that throughout his career split apart, uh, he continued with Audio Slave, which was uh, without Zach De La Rocha, it was the band Rage Against the Machine, and although I don't really like the guitarist, I really love the bassist, because those bass lines are fucking sick! They're killer! Uh, I had been blessed to be able to see Soundgarden play in concert in Toronto at the Molson Amphitheatre, Lawn Seats, um, Storm was coming, Chris Cornell started to sing, he brought the rain down! Oh, we ever, everyone got drenched. It was amazing. And there's a Canadian by the name of Ian Thornley who sounds very much like Chris Cornell vocally. Um, I uh, downloaded several of Ian Thornley's uh, songs from Ben Grek and from his other band. And uh, yeah, I've been pumping him through my car stereo the past couple of years. Well, I really like singing Chris Cornell. I also really like singing Ian Thornley. And uh, I think I'll be doing videos about that sort of thing come next season. Another band, while I was young, uh, was Blind Melon and Shannon Hoon, the vocalist there. Now, the music is um, rambunctious, and uh, if you know the album No Rain, and even that song, No Rain, absolutely fantastic. So happy and uplifting, wanting to be young and free and run around and explore life and saying goodbye to everything that's holding you back and traveling and getting perspective. Uh, unfortunately, Shannon did have problems with drugs as did another band that um, was also kind of angsty and rockin' and uh, also had songs about being free and cutting ties and that's Stone Temple Pilots. Scott Wheeland read his autobiography. autobiography. Um, yeah, sad ending. Uh, it was a big decline. He had some issues and addiction, of course, that just uh, really tacked onto him and he never really got free. However, the band did survive. Um, they managed to get uh, the lead singer from Filter and they came out with an album that I uh, had listened to uh, 10 years after it came out. Thanks, Andy, you turned me on to it, but of course, my usual standard way, I just kind of procrastinate. Well, I listened to it, and it's freaking amazing! Um, but there's only one album. Um, I guess the uh, brothers uh, that were in STP, the uh, um, uh, guitarist and the bassist, uh, they were doing other projects. Scott Wheeland, however, did cut several albums in Velvet Revolver, if you remember, uh, over the year 2000, kind of like the early noughts. Um, he, with his addiction problems, still had difficulties cutting records with uh, Velvet Revolver. Actually touring, um, things really kind of came to a close a little early because of him and his difficulties. But who was also in the band? Well, Slash, and the bassist from Guns N' Roses. And those two ba uh, members of that band were absolutely fantastic, still are fantastic. Uh, Slash and the Co-Conspirators. Um, that, uh, they've cut, what, three albums now. The first two I'm very familiar with, um, and I really enjoy Slash's playing. Comes up with a really freaking awesome groove. Uh, and he also came from a punk scene, the uh, LA Sleaze of California back in the 80s. So, yeah, there's some kind of punk undercurrents, but with a rock angle that made it very popular for the radio play. Um, I myself don't really have a punk attitude because I never really rebelled against anything. Uh, I guess my life has been pretty good. Um, also been working in the service industry, helping and healing people, so I don't really rebel. More of a Pink Floyd type of layback attitude observe. Um, kind of like an armchair intellectual, maybe. Or maybe I'm just too lazy to rebel. <laughs> I do like to lie down because I'm tired all the time. Maybe that's it. Uh, I do enjoy some uh, simple kick-ass rock tunes though, um, so STP uh, had a lot of those, uh, Slash, that's his jam. Um, also simple rock and roll songs, Buck Cherry, uh, his one particular album, Seven Sins, 
great. Seven Sins or Seven Deadly Sins? Um, it's actually a concept album, believe it or not. If you can get uh, um, some heavily tattooed dudes that like to scream and fucking rock out to actually think, sit down and plan out an album around Seven Deadly Sins, it's good. Um, there's also more technical music that I enjoy too. Uh, progressive metal, for example. Um, Disperse, for example. They're a Polish band. I was in Saskatoon, and, or Saskatchewan actually, in the Saskatoon area, while we were driving. And he's like, dude, you should listen to this stuff. It's freaking great. Um, he knows of my passion towards Chris Cornell and Alice in Chains. And uh, he's like, yeah, you should listen to it. And I did. And it was <sighs> spellbinding. And it's in English, and the voices were so young. And even though it's a Polish band, Disperse, when they come up with their album, uh, uh, and uh, they're, they're like six or seven or 12 minute tracks, very complicated drums, uh, complicated grooves, and very complex uh, structures of the recording, and how it flows. Um, the vocals are just beautiful, you can get lost in them, and it's just, fun to listen to it's like a bath i remember when i posted these uh 13 or so favorite albums of mine on facebook uh, a local musician who is absolutely incredible um he said you probably like tesseract and he was right so if you have a suggestion let me know uh i do want to quickly mention alice in chains Woohoo! yes alice in chains another uh band where i hear some of their songs and my pupils just dilate and i'm lost all of a sudden just uh um, the vocal melodies, uh, similar, uh, I guess, in groove with uh, some Black Sabbath earlier on. Yes, lead singers uh, Jerry Cantrell and Lane Staley. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the, the, the feelings and emotions and tensions that they create with uh, really wicked guitars. Um, kind of like uh, um, sonic mud. And struggling through it and feeling the tension and... Um, it was really, really good. Just uh, fantastic to listen to. Um, not always for the right people or for the right moods or the right times, but when I want to feel like I just want to dissolve into a couch, yes, Alice in Chains. Uh, but back on the progressive track, uh, I remember Tool came out. Um, my friend Der, he tried to introduce me to it. And he's like, listen to this, listen to this. The vocal, vocal dynamics, he's not screaming in your face. He, he comes on in and then he gets loud. And the music uh, has, is very dynamic. It, it has its uh, exciting parts. It has its slowdown or breakdown parts. And then when um, uh, Lateralis hit, oh, oh my God. Oh my god, like the posters, they were everywhere. The human body, you could see like muscles and tissues and some holy spiritual Hindus. So it was like the physical meeting the spiritual in a diagram. And that was just... Um, and there is a lot of philosophy that goes in that song. The songs are deep and, and meaningful and reflective and meditative. You look at some of the videos that have come through and it's just weird stuff going on um, about perspective and change and suffering and acceptance just really good stuff um, and uh, some of it does border on the darker side it's something interesting it's not all just happy music uh, it, actually I don't think any of tools music is happy <laughs> But um, there's other bands that kind of also go in that particular vein. Uh, um, there's a Canadian, Matthew Good, and he has come up with some amazing, amazing listenable songs. Uh, also, the border on the dark side. Um, you could hear it in the, in the tremor of his voice. Absolutely spellbinding. Uh, I remember listening to it in the 90s. Um, um, and uh, was album after album it's like holy cow this guy is so so dark and mysterious and, and there's so much tension going on but it's also like a lullaby well, the production of it was really really well done together um i think uh he eventually had to dissolve everything because it just wasn't his uh wasn't going in the direction that he wanted so that kind of sucks um I Mother Earth is another band that had a dissolution, but they were amazing while they were making their music uh, back in the late 90s. Um, very groove-oriented, very party-oriented. 
uh, listening to the materials on the radio or getting free albums and cases of Two Force. Uh, they were part of the scene in Barry. Their companies would sponsor huge summertime events. Um, they were a jam band uh, where they would, their songs would have particular phrases, still have these particular phrases where there's like minutes where they're just playing congos and timbales and jam with electric guitar. And eventually, after they play that particular moment where they all look at each other and get back into the third verse, or back to the chorus after the breakdown, everyone's just having a freaking great time, and floating bodies on top of each other, and yeah, stage diving. So, did I cover everything I wanted to say? No, I got two more. Um, one is The Doors. Yes, those, The Doors, with Jim Morrison. Really, really interesting music. Um, has its huge twists and turns, album to album, too. But it keeps it fresh. Um, and uh, uh, his stage performances where he was crawling around and whatnot, like the total frontman back in the 60s, that sort of thing was, like, driving people crazy. They just didn't, never seen something, like, that wild before, so... That's history. Um, they also made very big political statements that needed to get tamped down, so there's a whole censorship, censorship to that too. Read one of their uh, biographies, uh, one of the first ones I've read, I think. And uh, also The Lyrics by Jim Morrison. He reminds me of beat poetry almost, Jack Kerouac or um, Allen Ginsberg. Uh, like, well, maybe not Allen Ginsberg, that stuff is pretty raw. <laughs> but uh, a lot of his music is just absolutely cool. Uh, listening to the poetry, memorizing things like um, Indians scattered on dawn's highway bleeding, ghosts crowd the young child's fragile eggshell mind. You know, just beautiful florid imagery in his lyrics. Really, really cool stuff. Makes me want to write. And the last band I want to say, um, and this is about, I don't know, 13, are we reaching 14 or 15 albums slash uh, artists, or at least artists that produced the best albums for me, and that's Radiohead. I've seen them live and they are fantastic. My brother introduced me to Pablo Honey, which was okay. Uh, and then um, their album after that um, hit, and that was really cool The Benz. Um, after that was uh, OK Computer, and that was it. Listening to OK Computer through headphones. Uh, on the basement, all through my dad's stereo, it was just absolutely incredible. Music like I've never heard before. Um, it was like late uh, Second Invasion New Wave. But not so much using synthesizers, the synthesizer. Not so much that U Central European kind of German style of synthesizer. Uh, it was uh, uh, like a glitch type of music where they really effed with it. Harmonize that sh But of course they played with amazing drums, they played with a lot of reverb and echo with their electric guitars and uh, the high overarching lyrics. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, I kind of lost touch after that with Radiohead but I've rediscovered a few of their albums since then. Uh, I think um, uh, Moon Shaped Pool was uh, uh, the beginning of a renaissance for me, listening to more Radiohead, backtracking and taking a look at Kid A and King of Limbs, and finding out the gold tracks that are among their buried. So yeah, those are the kinds of sounds I really, really like. Um, grunge was a big factor, and grunge came from post-punk, trying to avoid new wave. Uh, with the British metal, uh, British uh, synthesizers, and yet that somehow creeped in. Harmonize that sh uh, And uh, other British influences like British metal, um, Black Sabbath in particular, uh, and how that influenced uh, a lot of the rock that melded together with the punk scene on the west coast of uh, North America. Um, and it's uh, the kind of guitar-driven music that I really appreciate, the kind of stuff that I want to do. Um, having l deep and mysterious lyrics that evoke uh, emotion is the kind of stuff that I want to do, that I would like to turn into lyrics that I can then sing high out and arching, a la Chris Cornell or Bono or um, Radiohead. Tom York. Um, uh, if I can take other elements from other bands and come up with uh, radio friendly stuff, that'd be great. Um, but this kind of hones in for me reflectively 
the kind of sound and drive that I want. Um, so I've come up with songs and I've played them before and I'm just like, you know what this needs? This needs a little bit of this band or a little bit of this singer or a little bit of this kind of guitar sound. And that way I uh, include it and it sounds so much better. Using those songs for reference. Um, you know what? One band that also I can say has really influenced me is Led Zeppelin. Um, but that's more Robert Plant, the singer. And mer maybe early Cream with uh, Eric Clapton, because those lyrics are also pretty cool. Uh, if he isn't, you know, completely ripping off the blues and those lyrics. Uh, but that style of playing with a Stratocaster, um, I think can influence me still. Uh, you might be interested in albums that don't influence me. Uh, Shania Twain, uh, Ed Sheeran, I kind of want to stab him. But uh, that's only because he's a direct rival to the kind of sweet guitar music that I can sing. Um, and uh, I have to say the Beatles were not a big influence on me because they were just everywhere and permeated the culture. So that influence came through like mass media. So when I heard the, oh, it's the Beatles on radio. I'm like, yeah, I've heard this like zillions of times before. Uh, it wasn't uh, inspiring. Um, I understand the concepts. I finally saw all the movies, but I saw them back to back on YouTube and they're weird. Uh, in fact, I challenged myself to listen to a post Beatles record. Uh, I uh, just today listened to um, John Lennon's Bridges and Walls and I didn't like it. I also found a song called Blue Jay Way, and it's not my thing. Woo! I also think that I have a particular bias. I mean, I'm a human being, right? Um, I've had my exposures to music, uh, maybe as expanded as it is. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't heard of that, if it's amazing, I would like to hear. And again, I kind of procrastinate. So let me know in the comment section and say, you must listen to this and maybe drop a link and I will. Uh, for example, a friend of mine, um, oh geez, uh, Mr. Wiley, he uh, said you should take a look at VAST, VAST. Yes, Alex Wiley, I listened to VAST. Uh, it's a pretty interesting album. Uh, I can see how you get lost into it. Uh, and it was formative for you. Uh, you play cello, you know music, you can read it. Um, but uh, not really my thing. I understand it as a concept, but not my kind of music. Uh, also, um, Mr. Nolan, uh, thank you very much for the sound system. I know you love Metallica and your band that plays Metallica covers fantastic. Uh, you also cover Tool. Freaking great! But, Mr. Richard Nolan, um, I uh, have been exposed to Metallica a long time ago and that was my friend's uh, favorite music. I have seen Metallica and really interesting effects with uh, fire, etc. But I've also seen Megadeth and I kind of like their catalog a bit more. Um, yeah, it's fresher. It's not so everywhere. It's not hasn't been rammed into my ears as much and so it's pretty good. Seeing how Dave Mustaine also was part of Metallica once upon a time, um, having that link is pretty awesome. Um, hearing uh, Metallica on the radio, uh, listening to um, Megadeth on the radio, I was like, whoa, oh, turn this up. It's now, sadly, I have to admit that a lot of these uh, heroes and icons of mine are either dead um, or they have had to go through rehab and then died or they're old and they're going to die like Ozzy, Clapton. And that's kind of a sad thing too. Like I, I idolized a lot of these amazing musicians and uh, they have had difficulties with their lives with drugs and I hope that that's something that's not inherent in myself because um, I've had some troubles but I've never died from them. Um, there have been ups and downs in my life and the troughs were really shitty um, and I'm not a career musician now and who knows maybe that would have actually freaking killed me. Um, it's uh, interesting to kind of, you know, with conjecture. And then if I do become small town famous and then get picked up by a label and then start to, you know, produce records and, and uh, put on shows and stuff, how am I going to be coping with that if uh, a lot of the people that whom I've looked up to, up to have off themselves? 
I wonder how the guy from uh, Holst, yeah, um, Holst and the Planets, uh, how he died. Uh, I hope. I know he's dead. He wrote his music like over a hundred years ago, and that stuff is still good. I'm going to have to Wikipedia that. Oh, speaking of a resource, Wikipedia is fantastic. I'm looking up authors all the time. Like, for example, Tears for Fears. I've been listening to like five or six of their hits on constant rotation. I can't get sick of that music. It's just so good. I have to Wikipedia and find out more about their history. I think one of the biases I have about music is that albums aren't just made anymore. They're just not. Uh, it's all singles or uh, it's mixes and remixes. Someone will create with something, uh, create a sound, and then it'll be picked up by someone else with a different singer. And then they'll promote it, promote it. Uh, it'll go around uh, scenes and clubs and stuff uh, through DJs, and it's uh, who knows who. Um, or you have different genres of music, completely like hip hop, where they have uh, several artists that form a club that then cross promote. And that way, you don't have to really put your money into like having a uh, a single album because. Well, you've got maybe about four hits, and the other 12 songs are just kind of shite. So that was always a risk in the 90s, and now you can just do singles and promote it all yourself. Promote it yourself on YouTube. Um, and uh, then if you get yourself on a Spotify playlist, then shoot, that just increases your numbers and finally someone's gonna notice you pick you up and maybe hopefully produce your song properly or put a, a, a your songs could then be placed on a catalog and um, you can then record an LP uh, get some money behind you um, you'll have to sign contracts uh, you have to find the A&R people or be in places where the A&R people can find you there's there's a whole formula for this sort of thing these days things are have also kind of changed around a bit now too with technology and and um, yeah, the production has had to kind of remorph around itself. Um, in the meantime, there's a whole bunch of things on YouTube I can then just research and pick up. And that includes all the late greats, um, uh, going over the albums again and again and, and listening to them and just falling in love all over uh, and picking up things that I haven't heard in a long time or rediscovering things or finding things that I never even heard before in the songs. So good. But as long as it's quality and I, this is the kind of quality that I like. So uh, I'm still continuing learning about my background and what I like and how that's been uh, formed and how that can carry me on to the future and how I can better judge myself. And conversely, what I don't like about what uh, songs uh, are going on right now, what songs were in the past, what the influences were uh, geographically or in, in the in the different uh, uh, what's it called cultures so if you know what kind of music you are very interested in and if it's similar to mine then let me know or if you have things or suggestions that you would think that I would appreciate um, like uh, McNeil did Bruno McNeil that'd be fantastic I have try to keep my mind open to these things anyways that's it thank you very much for listening um, I hope I really hope this one's gonna be under 20 minutes uh, and if you're in Athabasca why not visit the lollipop thrift shop on 4913 51 Street, across from Ken's Confectionery. Say hi to Sherry Breezy, won't you? Thank you.